Hi, my name is Brandon Williams. I'm the owner and lead system designer at Iron Edison Battery Company. In this video, we're gonna run through a quick introduction of all the different components that make up a solar and battery system. At Iron Edison, we love helping people learn about this technology. If you have any questions about solar or battery systems, please give us a call or reach out, check out our website, let us know how we can help. Let's go ahead and take a look at all these different components that make up a solar and battery system. We'll start by looking at a simple diagram showing the flow of electricity in a battery-based solar system. We'll cover each part of the system, starting first with the solar array. A solar array is made up of solar modules, wired in series and parallel to build desired voltage and current. The solar modules connect together through special connectors. These ensure a proper, safe connection and can only be disconnected by using a solar cable tool. Connecting the positive and negative leads together builds voltage in a series string. Most charge controllers have a limit of 150 volts DC, so no more than two or three solar modules are used per series string. The end of each series string lands in a combiner box. The positive ends of each solar string go through a breaker mounted on a DIN rail inside the combiner box. This allows each solar string to be safely disconnected out here at the solar array. This is the first of several circuit breakers you will see throughout the system. In most solar energy systems, you'll find circuit breakers or a disconnecting means at both ends of the wires that connect from the solar array back into the power panel. Just like its name sounds, the combiner box also serves as the site where each solar string is combined into one circuit, known as the PV output circuit. Each string of solar panels is put into parallel on a bus bar inside this combiner box. By wiring in parallel, we're building the amperage on this PV output circuit. The next stop, inside with the charge controller. As the positive from the solar array feeds into the power panel, it passes through uh, an input circuit breaker that protects the input of each charge controller. And then once the charge controller does its work of taking the high voltage input and stepping it down to a lower battery voltage, that power will go through another circuit breaker called the charge controller output circuit breaker. You can see here that we're able to individually isolate the inputs and the outputs for each of the two charge controllers. And the breakers uh, mimic the configuration that you saw out at the combiner box. With the flip of a breaker, I'm able to turn off the power going to each of the charge controllers. I'm also able to isolate or turn off the solar array coming into each of the charge controllers. This will allow me to safely set up and program each of the charge controllers without the energy coming in from the solar array. These digital maximum power point tracking charge controllers are able to take the low amperage, high voltage power coming from the solar array and very efficiently step it down to a low voltage, high amperage output that's ideal for battery charging. This particular system has two charge controllers. In this configuration, each charge controller is fed by a thousand watts of solar power. The charge controllers do have power limitations and they're different when the system is installed with a 12, 24, or 48 volt battery. At Iron Edison, we're happy to help you understand and do all the calculations required to size the circuit breaker, the solar array, and the charge controller to meet your specific needs. Also housed within the power panel is the inverter's DC disconnect. This will allow me to turn on and off the inverter, which is the main piece of equipment that takes the direct current or DC from the solar and battery system and inverts that direct current into alternating current or AC. And this is what our standard household appliances use for everyday power. The inverter can be programmed to automatically 
draw power from the grid when the battery gets low. The inverter can also be programmed to fire up a generator if the battery is low. We have the option to prioritize whether it's grid or generator that comes on when the battery reaches a low state of charge. Everything happens automatically, which is a really nice feature of this system. Inside the power panel, there's multiple bus bars for connecting the DC input, DC output, the inverter, and each of the charge controllers. It's a really important part of any battery-based system. The power panel also houses the AC input and output circuit breakers. And the assembly at the top here would allow me to completely bypass the solar energy system in case of maintenance uh, or any other reason where I may want to directly power the loads on my sub panel, power them directly from the grid. Last, but certainly not least, we have the battery, which is the heart of any off-grid system. The battery stores extra solar energy and also powers the inverter. The battery needs to be reliable, durable, and long-lasting. There is no battery that embodies these traits more than nickel iron. Invented by Thomas Edison, a nickel iron battery will last 30 plus years with daily use and pairs great with solar. Iron Edison also offers a lithium iron battery, which is safe, powerful, and maintenance free. It's a great fit for many residential battery backup applications. Deciding on a battery is a critical decision for your system. Give us a call and our staff can recommend which battery type would best fit your needs. Thanks for joining us today as we looked at all the different components that make up a solar and battery system. At Iron Edison, we love helping people learn about this technology, and we have a team of dedicated system designers who are able to answer any questions that you may have. At Iron Edison, we're always happy to help. Thanks again.